Rahul Bat, Zamal. Stone structures like um, Gebet Tepe, how did they get the stone structures? Or how did they get the physical stones that weigh maybe 80, 100 tons yeah. in place? And why did they do them? Okay, excellent question. Have you heard of Coral Castle? Because that's dealing with Edmund. Um, I can't remember his surname, but I'm sure there are brothers in the chat that will, will pull him up. But um, Coral Castle is one of those things that was built like that, just like the pyramids that, you know, in, in Giza and Egypt, where people are still baffled. How did they carry these big stones and how did they move them and what were they for? So that relates to your question. So our, our ancestors, the ancient ones, had technology and abilities whereby they were able to use things like levitation, right? Levitation is the ability to move things and um, move them to a position. Um, also, they had technology which is now re-emerging called 3D printing. So, you know, three, even like um, the guy that's building the robots, don't want to give him too much do you know what I mean? Publicity. But the guy that's, you all know who I'm talking about. He's doing that now with houses where you're building a house and then dismantling it and taking it to the location and just putting it together. So um, our ancient ones, the people with this technology and with the knowledge, they were able to levitate and move huge structures and put them where they wanted them to go. Um, and when I say our ancestors, this is going back to extraterrestrials, okay, um, who then directed and the, um, the people that were initiated and knew the secrets, because the pyramids were used for several things, but one of them was for teaching and teaching this information that we're talking about, such as levitation, okay, um, alchemy and certain things that people find, they say is magic today, but it's really just knowing the science. So those that were initiated and knew the secrets were guided by our ancestors that people refer to as extraterrestrials and they helped them to design and plan and build these structures which you can find all over the world because these schools, these mystery schools, um, although Egypt was the center and a lot of people went to Egypt to study, this is why in your religious books they tell you that you know Moses was in Egypt Abraham was in Egypt, Jesus went to Egypt, everybody seems to be going to Egypt because they were going there to study and learn and they were taught these sciences, even according to their stories. So, but we, we know that um, they were built for specific purposes and some of it was to balance out the planet because when we speak about this planet now, most people don't know the, the history of the planet itself because the planet as it is now, it's a lot smaller than what it was before. It used to be three to four times bigger than what it is today. Um, and that's partly due to the, the meteorite showers, due to the crash of Nibiru. Um, you know, there were many things that took place where the planet got smaller because it broke off and then they had to kind of mold it, rebuild it and terraform it. And then, um, you know what I mean, keep it in its orbit and everything like that that is today. But I hope that's answered your question. So it was really levitation, the science of 3D printing and assistance from extraterrestrials with higher technology guiding us, their prodigy or their, their um, offspring to also assist. All right, cool, all right, let's see. Um, all right, let's get to the questions. Um, Edward, I see you. How factual is it that Christianity was in Africa, particularly Ethiopia, early in history? And if that is so, was it the Ethiopian Christians who spread it throughout Africa to places like, like Ghana? Yeah, it is factual that, um, well, they call it Christianity, but it's just that there were, there were books that, are older than the Bible, etc., that were found um, and passed through to, to Ethiopia. Um, one of them being what people know as the Maccabees. And um, yeah, a lot of those practices in terms of following some of the teachings of the Essenes um, were passed down. And then that got messed up and desecrated to become what people are calling Christianity today. But as we keep saying, um, 
we predate religion, so we have to go back way before Christianity. We have another caller, Rahubat. Oh, my name is Tumahini. I'm from Africa, specifically Tanzania. Greetings. Go ahead. Uh, I would like to ask to ask you two questions. The first one is I would like to know a short story about the, the real Yeshua Sananda and the, what are the cloister Dora Torah plates. Sorry, can you repeat that last? Okay. I would like I would like to ask you three questions. Yes, I thought you said two before, but <laughs> now it's three. But yeah, go on, go on. Yeah. Okay. I think I heard a little one. bit about the the real Sananda, and and then go ahead, go ahead, please. Uh, I would like to know about a short story about the the real Sananda Yeshua, and what was the, his purpose of incarnation into this earth plane. And uh, what are the CDT plates, Cluster Dora Terra plates? Okay, all right. First of all, let me answer the first question. Um, these names like Sananda, Yeshua, all the terms, they're, they're just different titles that different cultures use to refer to him. So um, we teach that you have an intergalactical name if you're somebody that has actually elevated to the point where you're now amongst the intergalactical community, all right? So on the the crafts that um, a lot of people refer to as, you know, like Nibiru and the Manjit and many, many crafts, they're known by different species, by different names and by um, different tones. So for example, the master teacher is known as Parnabab Yanun. So the Yanun with different dialects can be Yanan. Yeah. So um, if you read, we have we have a, a, a book called The Real Trinity, right? Which explains that there are three different characters that have been put into the story of the Bible where you're talking about Jesus, right? So you the, the one you're calling Yahshua would be the would be the first one that would be the son of Mary and the angel Gabriel right but people say that it was a uh, an immaculate conception and a virgin birth so that would be the first one the second one is that Yeshua had a child with Mary Magdalene who was his wife right and they had a son known as Bar Jesus, yeah, but in the Bible they refer to him as Bar Jesus. And then there's a third one called um, Cleophas, which was the son of Cleopatra and Mark Antony. Now, in the Bible, their three lives are mixed into one. So the real one that you're saying, um, Bar, I mean, the son of Bar, the son of Yeshua, Bar Jesus, he went to. In, um, to like India and he traveled and he, he learned like the Kabbalah and he was doing sorcery. And then that is what ended up having him killed. He's known as Saint Isa as well, right? And then the other one also got killed. When he got killed, he was brought back to the Vatican and then um, his remains were put there, but they eventually got moved. But there's a, that's a long story. So um, when you say his return, he does it doesn't say that he was going to return. The Bible and the scriptures are misinterpreting what's happening, which is dealing with the Christ consciousness. Because if you, even if you read the book of Revelations, it says that he's going to send and signify it through his angel. And the angel is Malachi. This is the person that will come and people will think is, is Yeshua. But he will be coming to teach and raise people up. Um, I'm going to have to keep some of these answers short because we've got a lot of questions. But um, get that scroll, the real trinity, and it will explain more about the question you've asked. Um, the plates, again, these are things that have been found. There are many, many tablets and, and um, writings that are found that tell you correct information, but they get destroyed or hidden. Um, and there are many, many books. And I'm sure some of my mods in the chat will give you more information regarding, um, regarding that, all right? 
Okay, next caller, please. Yes, hello? Yeah, greetings, Rahubat. Yes, Rahubat. Uh, my name's Sheldon from Dunstable. Greetings. Um, I heard you say before that um, you want people to basically come into the community. Yes. Um, what, what, um, so if, if, or what is the best way to come in, or can you guys help with um, how we um, make, make our, or help the community, or? Yeah, sure. So the best way is to get in contact in tune with us. This is why we're giving all these like avenues that you can get involved and contact us, right? So you, you have to make yourself available. I know that's a good point because a lot of people have actually sent us emails to say they want to join the community and we are actually inundated with a lot of people. So don't, don't worry if we haven't got back to you. We are. This is why we've actually created like the Telegram group as well, because it's more instantaneous and you can like, you know, keep asking us if we haven't got back to you in time. But we, we've sent out the newsletter. That's why at the beginning I mentioned the newsletter. The newsletter was sent out to everyone that has contacted us about, you know, wanting to join, wanting to get involved. Um, and unfortunately, some people may have it in their spam or in their junk or, you know, in, in, in somewhere that you have to search to find it because, you know, the email address may not be familiar. So contact us, make yourself known. Um, and that's another point that like, there's so many people that we reach and not everybody follows through. Some people just get excited, they like the information, but there are real people that are willing to, you know, do the, the work and transform themselves, get involved and get involved with helping and building sharing the knowledge so if you're one of those people then um yeah make contact join the telegram group and we will get in tune and in touch with you all right we've got another um, another question another caller rahul back please go ahead uh greetings um you may or not, may not remember me from last week i asked about the telescope questions and you gave a good response back but um my question today is um I have a theory that, you know, many different tribes on Earth, which I don't really like the word races, but many different tribes on Earth has degenerated over the years physically where they don't have certain glands in place in their body and also DNA structures is compromised. And the question is, is it ethical for us to use science to regenerate us to a higher physical form to reach spiritual, you know, ascension. Absolutely, absolutely. And you're right, the, the, the generation, even the fact that most people on the planet use less than like 10% of their the brain or less shows you that you've got 90% that is not being used. But the degeneration has come by way of the wrong information and the wrong knowledge that has been taught. And um, like we said, religions and these older ways actually dumb you down because they don't allow you to exercise your own mental cap um, capability and capacity. And not only that, it's like the devices, you know, all of these, the social media and um, the technology that we are using, for example, even calculators, that makes you not exercise your brain. So the degeneration comes from the bad foods that we're eating, etc., etc. So in order to um, reverse that, this is why we're here. This is why Wu Sabat is here. This is why the knowledge and the information by way of Parnabab Yanun, Dr. Malachi Z. York, is to help you, one, reignite your true being, right? Because once you do that, you start to study, you start to read, you start to free yourself from the bondage of people telling you what you should do. So technology, if you, again, I break this down a lot because repetition is one of the ways as well, because that dumbed down means that we don't have a long attention span. This is why people like the, you know, the social media, the short clips, the, the, the snippets, and it's not really a it's not really the best way to learn, even though it's quick, because everybody wants everything quickly. Fast food, everything is fast. And, you know, that's rushing when you should really 
you know, take time and really like um, absorb and digest what you're getting. So we, we say start the reading, the technology. So this is what I was going to say, I say all the time, where you look at who you are, you're like, okay, you go from density, then density to matter, right? The reason I say density is because there's different vibrations and level of density. Then you go to matter, right? The matter is what then forms what you will call atoms, yeah? And then atoms form cells, and the cells then form what we call organs or organisms or body, and then the organs make up your body. I'm saying that to say you have to go back to the cells, you have to go to the cellular, you have trillions of cells, um, in fact 24 trillion cells within your body. Most of the degeneration comes from those cells dying, even when you're looking at health, like Dr. Sebi even said it, like if you, if you damage the cells, like even when you start to get cancer, you have to get back to the cells and rejuvenate the cells. So I'm saying that to say that the knowledge and the information goes to the, um, you have to learn how to deal with the cells and the regeneration. And this goes to your brain as well, dealing with neuroscience, regenerating those neurons when you start to think and use your brain more. So yes, science, the science is knowing how to regenerate those cells. And then that's physically, but then mentally as well with your neurons. So the science is really in the books. That's why Wu Sabat is all about, Wu Sabat is about you regenerating your brain and your mind and then you connect with, you know, your divine self and then you can do anything. All right. Um, Ajayi Moses, again, I appreciate love your donation. Thank you. Um, would you say that Kamala Harris and Smokey Robinson are neutronoids, and in the man from Planet Risk, the master says every everyone has a clone, and his clone was a yogi. Do you have a clone, and how do you know? Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of a description of what a neutronoid would look like, yes, those people that you've picked out, um, yeah, that's what we're saying. That for those who don't know what a neutronoid is. You have the main races, the three sub, the, the three races, which is um, we say um, Negroid, Mongoloid, and Caucasoid, and then the sub races are the mixture of those three, and then you have Neutronoids, which is taking DNA or percentages from the different root races and the sub races and creating a being that you can't tell literally what race they belong to. Um, and in The Man from Planet Risk, the master says everyone has a clone and his clone was in yogi. Do you have a clone? We, yeah, we, we, when we talk about the clone, the clone doctrine, again, you're right, it's in The Man from Planet Risk book. And um, these days as well, there are so many clones. And this is why it's very difficult nowadays to know what is true because of the media and people that have money, they can afford clones now. And this is what, in ancient times, the people with money used to have clones for body parts. Because if you imagine when somebody needs a heart, a liver or something, they have to go on a waiting list. They have to make sure that the person matches, you know, their blood types, etc., etc. So it's hard to get, you know, when you need a transplant. So people with money can have clones to use them for body parts. Um, that's a quick answer. Again, look at the Planet Risk book. Um, Rahul Bhatt, is that Zamata? The next person hello. on the... Yeah, hi. Greetings. Hi, hello there. Yes, go ahead. What's your, is, what's your name? Where are you calling from? What's your question? My name is Victor Patrick, and I'm from Tanzania. Okay, go ahead. What's your my, question? My question is, uh, you say that the, the first human being was, was, was the woman, right? Yes. Uh, well, yeah, go on. Uh, and uh, you said that they, they passed almost uh, 400,000 4, 4, years so as a man to, to start to speak, right? I, I, I just, what's your question? Oh. My, my question is, did, did a woman, did a woman get, get, get some, some, 
some knowledge before a man. Okay, is that a question, yeah? Yes, I don't like to. I I, I don't know how to like. I don't know how to 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 produce it well, but. Okay, let uh, me address it. If the first one is is it is were women here first? Yes. Did women speak before men? Yes. Um, because the woman there gives birth to the man or to the male. You can tell by the X chromosomes and the XY chromosome. The XX is, 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 you know, even the material, the genetic material is more than a man. And when, when it's not just me saying that, when they were trying to find who the first person on the planet is, they dig up and they found like, you know, the bones of Lucy. And in our book um, that we've put out, we give you all the findings and all of them are in Africa going back millions and millions of years. You know, so yes, the woman is first. The woman is more intelligent than the male. Having said that, like the caller previously was saying that there's a lot of degeneration. So even though the woman is first and the woman has more intelligence and everything, the men suppress the woman as well. So that's why most of religions and organizations and, you know, the world is run by men or was run by men because the woman was suppressed to the point where she was just made to just be like, stay at the back of housewife, you know, not really being able to really express and um, allow herself to, to flourish and grow. But that's all changing now because the, the, the new cycle is the woman's time. It's the woman that's coming to be up front. And that doesn't mean that they're not going to work with the men, but men have ruled for so long um, in ancient cultures, we ruled side by side with, with our, you know, with the females. So the gods and goddesses ruled together. So yes, in terms of um, the woman being first, speaking first, yeah, they spoke 54,000 years ago. All right. Um, I think that's what I remember from your question. We have another question. Um, Rahul Bhatt, Zamaltak, greeting sister. Go ahead. What, what's your name and what's your question? Greetings, brother. My name is Jackie. I'm from Toronto, Canada. Uh, greetings. I just wanted to ask if, mm -hmm. um, with regards to uh, after death and the afterlife, and with regards to uh, escaping the matrix, mm -hmm. or yeah, escaping this inorganic matrix, um, is do you, do you, are you in alignment with the idea of? not going into the white light and that that is a trick and could you give any insight uh into that please to her to her yes um excellent question it shows that you're reading that's great yeah um one we don't die because energy cannot be destroyed um i ex i think i'm going to explain it again so you have different levels of existence or different realms right and these realms the highest of them everything has ether the highest is nine ether so let's say you have nine levels and when you this body that we we attach to is just a skin suit and what people are calling death is when you no longer have a need for this physical body and then you're translating or transmuting or crossing over to a higher level or vibration now there are different levels and if you are not aware and haven't raised your energy and your vibration in terms of your counterparts your spiritual being your your soul um, your mental being then you can literally come back um, and you keep coming back and reliving um, and living through different skin suits and, until you are able to move on so the question about coming back, that's where you see the white light. And this is why the religious people or people who have a near-death experience will tell you that they saw or met angels or they saw a white light because you have ancestors that are waiting to receive you when you cross over. And if, if, you, are, if you make the grade, they will then help you. Just like when you're being born here, you have people in the hospital, you know, your, your family that are waiting for the baby that's being born. It's the same going in the other direction. If you don't make it, then they, the, the white light that you see is a portal that brings you right back here to start again. 
That's what the sister's referring to. We have a scroll call, a master secret call, the physical, um, the spiritual you after the physical you dies. That goes into a lot of, um, of that information. And um, you have to study Wusabat, get involved with the community because there are many things that you get that you're not going to get in these short answers. So, yes, that is true. Um, let me move on and answer some other questions in here. All right. Um, okay, yeah, Tylonda Smith did have a question. She has two questions and she showed us some love, so I've got to answer those questions. Two questions. Did we form from the water or the stars? Two, I heard somewhere that the Jesus was serving the water God, i.e. baptism, water to wine and walking on water. All right. Yes, um, we, we, well, the first question is that, yes, we, we came from the stars. So in that regard, um, in that regard, the germs or the, the, the properties that, the properties that were inserted into the waters to germinate the water to then evolve to produce us, right, as humanoids came from the stars. The original um, people on the planet would be the Africans and that would be the, our ancestors from Orion and, and Sirius. But the waters and life forms also was already on the planet, as in, you know, there are many, many types of life forms in the waters and they're still there and others have evolved. But in terms of life that came onto land, that was from our ancestors putting these, these um, genes into the dolphin and then transported the dolphin here. And then the dolphin went in the waters and then germinated the water and then our life form evolved from, from the seas onto land. Um, I'm sorry, uh, the questions are coming so fast so that uh, I'm trying to find back where I was. Is there someone else on the call? All right, let me just, I just want to finish. Um, yeah, there you go, Yolanda's question. So yeah, we came from the stars first and then into the waters and then onto land. Um, and the water thing is because everything is water. So this is why Jesus was known as a fisherman. It's the, symbolic, the symbology is all about water. This is why instead of Christians wearing a cross, which was a symbol of death, it should really be a fish because he was a fisherman. He was from the waters. And uh, the, the Catholic Church, you know, with the popes, they wear that, um, the mitre, um, I think that's the right, yeah, the mitre, that, that kind of hat, that shows you a fish. That ties into the Dogon tribe because every one of the ancient ones know that we came from the water, the frogs, and, you know, we came onto land. Even the ancient Egyptian story talks about coming from the water. We're breathing water right now. We live in a planet called water, which is an aquarium. Oxygen and hydrogen is everywhere. That's all part of water. But I'm giving you snippets because, again, you need to study, come to classes where you can ask your questions and get a longer um, time. Rahul Bhattan, greetings to caller. Please say your name and where you're calling from and your question. Hello, my name is Thabo Mereminzi. Um, I'm from South Africa. Greetings, brother. I have two questions. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, the first one is, uh, I've, I've, I've been watching that Elon Musk, he says he wants to go to Mars if there are rockets, but I want to know, is there a firmament? Because it seems like they've been saying they want to go there, but they failed so many times. And oh. My second question. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. My, se my second question is, what is a disease? Can you please explain to me what is a disease? Okay, thank you. Right, the, the Mars thing, they've been to Mars a long time ago. And when you, you know, like what people are calling life, again, relating to the previous question, that life is not just humanoid life. Wherever there's water, there is life, you know. And I mentioned that there's ox um, hydrogen everywhere. And so they've already been to Mars. It's just that they don't give you all the information. They already have people... They've been to many places and it's just that the reason they can't escape is because you have our ancestors and certain other extraterrestrials that don't welcome them. Um, 
I know, yeah, the second question was about disease. The word tells you this ease. When you're not in a comfortable state, you're in an uncomfortable state, this means to go against, right? So ease, when you are ease, this ease is disease. And what that, that is caused by you, um, like I was explaining before, if your cells are getting damaged or your lungs or something that you've done to disconnect, a lot of times it's also spiritual because your vibration, remember you have counter, um, counterparts. And sometimes if you're, count, if you're not connected or the connection between your spiritual, your mental or your etheric being is out of whack, then it results in your physical body because as I explained before, your physical body is just a skin suit. You can also be, you can catch viruses, you know, um, viruses that, again, like go against your natural systems. So, for example, people drink, they smoke, they take pollution, they eat bad foods, um, and those diets create an acidic environment where diseases thrive. This is why it's good to not eat dead meat and, you know, the, the things we eat, dead flesh, um, they rot, they make your body sick. Metals, um, there are lots of metals that we take, ions, they're very, very tiny metals. Then we eat too many, um, like, people that eat cheese and things like that. This is why we say the cheese is not good because it builds up mucus. Again, Dr. Sebi was explaining about mucus. Um, the mucus traps the metals in your body, and these little ions, and then they start to rust. And the rust is what causes, you know, the cancerous cells. This is why you have to get to treating the cells. A lot of us don't drink enough water, etc. All right? So um, I hope that's answered the question. We have many, many books and scrolls that go into more detail. Um, Rahul Bakula, greetings. Uh, Travis Sutherland from Belize. Greetings. How are you? Yeah, I want I wanted to know if uh, the Elon Musk, the Starlink, if it has something to do with Skynet from out of the Terminator series, because it sounds, <laughs> you know, yeah, like it's the same thing that we're going through. Absolutely. If it's the beginning or something like that, you know. Yeah, I mean, you can see what the what the world is, um, where the world is going, and yeah, Starlink. That's his um, internet service that he provides, which all his technologies and everything that he's building actually links up. You know, like you know the, like he was even saying that you can take cars up with him, but yeah, Starlink is, it's literally as you say, if you watch the movies like the Terminator, which is the prequel to the Matrix movies, um, they literally tell you, you know, things that we're living in because most of what was happening in the movie The Matrix is literally what was happening. Now, if you watch movies that came way before, like iRobot, for example, you go back and watch that and you see what's happening today, you can see the, the relationship. And this is what, why we encourage people to watch movies because they tell you stories through tell live vision, tell live visually, you know, so you, you think it's entertainment, but a lot of what they're telling you and saying is obsolete technology, meaning that the master teacher taught us that every time you see a technology that they're making public, there are actually six levels deeper than that. Like, for example, if this was an iPhone 1, iPhone 6 is already out but you just don't have access to it until when you get iPhone 6, they will be on iPhone 12 because extraterrestrials are the ones that are working with some of these people and some of them are actually extraterrestrials themselves. So they, yeah, they, they tell you what's going on in the movies. If you go on the nashat.co website, go to the connect page, you see we have a whole list of movies for you to watch that we've been advised to watch. So that you can be in tune with what's going on. Um, yeah, so yeah, there's a link because his satellites are surrounding the planet right now in terms of so you can have access to, you know, to internet anywhere you are in the most remote places. And you see how he's lining up with the, the elections that are going on with the candidate. All right, let's keep going. Um, 
Yeah, I wanted to ask Joseph what was worries. Sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. What deal did the Pleiadians make to stop being eaten? Can nine ether beings use their energy for spiritual healing? What are names of gods for nine ether beings to pray to? Well, yes, so um, the Pleiadians basically made a deal to say that we will create you a, an alternative food source. This is how the Adamites were grafted and made. So that was the deal. Like It's like, imagine now everybody eats what they think is chicken. Because everywhere you go, is, they say it's chicken, chicken, chicken. Um, and most of the meat that you're eating, which doesn't have a bone or you didn't see it, could be any type of meat on the planet. Could be human meat, could be anything and you don't know. So once it's um, minced up, coloured, put into a burger, you eat it and then you just say everything tastes like chicken. That, that relates to the Matrix movie as well because there was a, a clip where the guy was eating a steak and he said, although I know this is not steak, you know, ignorance is bliss. And this is what they bank on, right? So, yeah, you've got you've to be very careful of what you're eating. So the Pleiadians, they asked the Draconians to say, look, we can give you a food source so that you can stop eating us or leave us alone, all right? The second part was um, nine ether beings. Yes, we do. We can use our, our, our energy to heal. We can heal anybody from anywhere in any part of the world. You just have to know that it's about frequency. Yeah, you just have to match that frequency. This is why people can pray for you. Um, and they say it's religion, but it's not. It's about that energy. Collective minds It's called mind linked. Um, where we have a master secret that actually goes into that. And once you're connected on, on the, the same resonance frequency, you're connected with any other person on that same resonance frequency. And together you can channel that energy anywhere in the universe and you can heal. Yes, so that's true. Um, and the names, that's important. This is why Wu Sabat is a culture that has a language because the tones that you you use in the words break the spell of the spellings of you know the the like the English. So yes, you need to know who to call on, and this is our Parnatharu. Again, when you're on the inside, when you're connected with us, when you come to the classes, you will get the chance and you know what um, what names to call on. Right, that's, that's our ancestors, there are many of them. There's a chant we have that we go through and list all their names. Um, okay, let's see what else I can. All right, uh, goes two in 23. There is no God, we're, being of the, we're beings of the stars. Let's remember that. Absolutely, the term God, this is just such a misused word because you know, you are the God. Like we've given you the quotes, even the Bible, the Quran tells you that you are because, you know, the term God just means that somebody that's in control because the attributes are all about a human. Walking, talking, grieving, he's sad, he destroys things. You know, that's what humans do. And depending on which side you're leaning towards, agreeable or disagreeable, you behave that way. But Wu Sabat makes you a supreme being. A supreme being is higher than a god. Yeah. Um, so there, let's let's start learning the language, learning the correct tones. You you are a supreme being, a natar, and a natar. Ret. Um, all right. Let's keep going. Okay. Uh, yeah, free the master teacher. I wrote the words down so that I can learn the song. Yeah, you, it go, you can go on YouTube and um, search Love and Unity, Freedom for the Master Teacher. All of you join the Telegram group, subscribe to OSM Vision, attend the classes, get on your journey because these, these lower mysteries and religions, they just distract you and make you waste your time and energy instead of focusing that energy into developing yourself. Yeah, so that question, I forgot to finish it off, goes 2023 about how do I feel about, yeah, they've, 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 how do I feel about um, the person that was quoting 
that there's non-human intelligence. This planet had non-human intelligence. Bacteria is non-human intelligence. If it can beat you to give you cancer, viruses are non-human intelligence. Because if it can give you cancer and you don't know what to do about it, it's, it's very intelligent, right? So yes, um, when we think about intelligence, we think as humanoids that we're the only, one, we're the only intelligent life form. The dolphins are far more intelligent than us. Many, many species are far more intelligent than us. So yes, non-intelligence life form have been here from the beginning. Facts, I need to make way to the UK. Yeah, come, 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 we welcome you. Do you think the stars are physical objects? No, stars are just um, hydrogen and helium that is burning. It's atomic energy. So when you say physical, this is why I always give you like the density thing because what you're calling physical, they, you see CERN, right, organization CERN. What they're doing is they've got projects, like they use the Hydron Collider, right, where they are basically speeding atoms to collide with each other to, to break them, to see what's inside of the tiniest thing. Because the more they keep going, because they're trying to figure out where did everything start from? Because everything starts small and then grows, right? So they want to know what was the first thing. And when they keep smashing these atoms together to divide them, they find out that it keeps subdividing and subdividing to the point where they, they open portals and um, bring things from outside of these, this realm. So yes, um, physical, depending on how small you're going, because everything is physical just at different levels of vibration until you get to where we're calling ether or the higher levels of ether. Can you tell me a Nubian story, something that is very important? That's so broad and vague, but the story is Wusabat is here. Wusabat is the future. Yeah, Wusabat to the world. Wusabat is what you need to, to grow and elevate and, and um, transform yourself. And the master teacher, Pana Babianun, is here. And that's why we're doing what we do. So I hope that's a good story because it was very vague. Um, I put in a request on both websites but didn't receive anything back. This is from iTech Smart Faster Service. All right, join the Telegram group because we get that live. And um, with those types of um, things through the website, we, you know, the emails or whatever could have gone to spam. No, there are many reasons why, but it might just be that it's coming. But I would say join the Telegram group. We've put the link in the chat. And then you can get a response from somebody straight away. Um, Quincy Fraser, how come demons and even aliens fear the name Jesus and get casted out when his real name is Yeshua? Yeah, that again, that's, that's opinions and religion because we, no, I'm not, where's the proof? Um, Where's the proof? And again, that's such a subjective question because we have to break down what we're calling demons, aliens, and where's the proof that they fear the name Jesus? Um, when people do things by their own power, whoever's the person that's doing this, if I was doing it, it's you that is the power that you're bringing, not, not you're, you're saying is Jesus, but you know, it's just like I explained before, a lot of people give the praise to somebody else for the power that they have and for them doing what they do. Um, let me. Would you accept my book to be showcased at your store if I made one? Yeah, we have hundreds of books from different authors. I mean, we are not that type of uh, people. We don't, we don't fear other people's information because we know Wu Sabat is so far ahead, you know, of everything out there. And um, that's why we say, ask everybody, listen to everybody, read all the books, research, make up your own mind. And we have many books from different authors. So yes, you, you know, we'd have to see the book um, and then um, take it from there. 
that's maram marami um r b o d n how does one find out where they are from as there are so many different plants and star systems etc this this um question is you know this is why we need to get the master teacher out you can do the work and try and you know contact your ancestors and things like that but ultimately um, there's certain information that only he can give us do we all come from the same place no we don't um, uh, da, 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 da. greetings and gratitude always some vision how can we book you and your team as an in-person speaker for our leaders conference yeah again just telegram group Telegram group. I'm going to keep saying that because um, that's how we will be able to re respond, respond quicker. We'll go live call. Greetings, family. What's your name? Hey, how are you? Doing my best. How are you? Okay, very good. My name is Earl. I'm uh, from Th Thailand. Mm -hmm. And thank you for all your teaching. I appreciate it. I um, was listening to you one time and you were talking about you all have healers who can help people who are going through different problems. Mm -hmm. And I have like kind of an emergency right now and I need a, a healer to help me with some uh, something that I'm dealing with and I want to know if there's any way you could help me. Again, you, but so you could con get me in contact with someone who can help me that's with, that does Wusaba. Okay. Again, that's a very personal matter and we'll have to take that one offline and um, find out exactly what, what the details are and then we can, um, we can help, all right, in any way we can. Yeah, okay. Uh, what else have we got here? When is Nibiru returning? Um, this is from, I can't see the name, but Nibiru, a lot of people say, when is Nibiru returning? And everyone's talking about Nibiru as if it's for everyone. And also, Nibiru is too big. Nibiru does not come here it, it comes close and then it releases smaller crafts to pick up people because it's too big Nibiru coming too close to the planet will cause a lot of destruction and this is even though um you know it's happening anyway with like you know the the different um like tornadoes earthquakes and all of that that's because there's a dimensional shift happening anyway and Nibiru is dealing with the Anunnaki's and um yeah, not everyone's, uh, not, not every, not, Nibiru is not for everyone. Okay, let me see. Uh, Rahuba, is Dr. Yo Afro Uno? If he is, which school was he teaching under that name? Yes, Dr. York is Afro Uno. Yeah, and then in that, he was teaching us Wu Nuwap at the time, but we weren't ready for it. So he just planted the seeds and then, um, carried on teaching us what we wanted until he was ready to give us what he came to give, which is um, Wu Nuwap, but now Wu Sabat. Uh, and um, yeah. She doesn't want to say her name yet. Okay. And um, if, if he's, which school was he teaching under that name? Um, he was teaching under the name of Amanubira Akata at the time. And um, yeah, a lot of people didn't really know that. Next caller, could you go ahead and... Um, Ask a question, Hi, please. good afternoon. Greetings, Rahuba. How are you doing? By saying and giving um, my name, can Dr. Malakai Z York see and read me and like tell me about me? Um, if that makes sense. I, well, you're talking to me right now, but he's a being that if you would like to have a connection, you can. Just like how you would have a connection with any other entity, but um, you have to raise your vibration and understand and know how to make a connection with him. But um, names are just titles. That, um, yeah, so I, 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 the question is quite vague and um, can he, he can connect with anybody and um, have a connection if, if you have the, the spiritual connection. Yeah, I hope that answered the question. Okay, let's see. If Dr. Yo had so much knowledge of the past, present, and future, how come he didn't see his community's 
downfall and his impending incarceration. Serious question. Yeah, that's kind of funny because, um, well, it's not funny, but I'm not, I, I see you're serious. You're not just taking, uh, you're not just trying to be funny, right? So the question, the answer is actually that he did. And also you have to recognize that Dr. Malachi Ziyo is a part of a council, the nine, right? And there's a, there's a book, a, a, a scroll called The Nine, that he explains that just like we have the Galactical Confederation, um, they work together and they, they, um, they know things and they plan ahead. So in terms of, you're saying, for example, the community downfall, everything, everything um, you have to destroy to rebuild. So just because something might be considered downfall, um, we're still thriving and we're still rebuilding and it's going to be even bigger and better. So sometimes that might seem to somebody like, oh, it's a downfall. But um, like if, if, for example, you had a nice house and your house got destroyed, that's an opportunity for you to rebuild. And just like when, for example, Mandela was incarcerated, the world got to know about him. And there are things that are done on a higher level or higher intelligence that you may not see. And it may look to you one way, but it's actually the other way. So the community is still thriving. It's still, it's still here. So um, the impending incarceration led to him having the time to actually complete our language, complete a lot of information and our doctrine that we, ha we have now. Because before his incarceration, he was about 400 to 500 books deep. And since then till now, there's over a thousand books. So um, I'm just saying, don't believe the hype. Just because something looks a particular way doesn't mean that that's what it is. Um, I say he knew because if those of us who have been around for a long time, there are many books or recordings that you can go back to and listen to and read now that you see that he told us of this coming. Yeah. And finally, um, that's like saying if Jesus knew he was going to die on the cross, okay. what happened? Because he came. If every teacher you can think of that has come ended up being, even Muhammad was poisoned and killed. We can go to Malcolm X, we can go to any, anyone you can, any name you can pick up. You, there's not one person you can say to me that came that knew everything and didn't have what you're considering to be a downfall. However, he's still here, still um, teaching and building. Greetings, Rahul Bat, caller. Greetings, my name is Naeem. And my question is, does fasting break strongholds um, as well? Will we see a massive disclosure in the physical? Tour, absolutely. The disclosure yeah, part. Sir. Yeah, fasting does. This is where we're saying that, you, you, you know, you have to learn how to, because... There are many things that you hold within your being, like in the cells, in your memories, um, in your subconscious especially. The subconscious is where sub means under, hidden, right? So that's why you get words like submarine. Marine deals with water and sub is like you have submarines or cra or be, um, crafts uh, that are deep down on the water that you don't know they're there. Submental, which is this area here where sub is under and it interacts with your mental. Um, subdue, everything that's used the word sub is saying it's hidden. So when you say subconscious, you have a subconscious mind. And a lot of a subconscious mind is where you're taking information or taking things that are affecting you, but you're not aware of it because you're using your conscious mind mostly. So a lot of things are hidden in the subconscious mind. And that's where by disciplines like fasting, meditation and cleansing, this is why the master teacher asks us to clean ourselves inside out. And by doing that and being aware, that's where these spiritual practices deal with the sub-mental or the sub-conscious, because that's where 
sub, again, listen to the word subliminal. Subliminal indoctrination is like, for example, when you're watching a, um, a movie, which used to be called cinema, because it's about sin. Um, they, they promote things that may appear to be good, but they're bad for you. But the way that movies work is you have many frames and within the different frames, messages can be put in between so that when the reel is going and you're moving the pictures quickly, you're seeing moving pictures. But there are small images or things that are flashed in between that are, are picked up by your subconscious mind. And that will program you to do something. So for example, many experiments were carried out during, you know, when you go to the cinema and you're watching a, a you know, movie, moving pictures, and at breaks or afterwards, the messages that were subliminally flashed at you, you can then, it might say, buy popcorn or go and buy a particular drink. And you see a lot of people will do it. So they, the, be, the psychologists and people that know about the mind, this is where you get things like MK Ultra and the, the, the programming of the mind or what they call, um, yeah, basically they, they, it's all about programming you so that with certain tones, certain vibrations, certain words, certain pictures, you will react and not realise because it's all in the subconscious. So yeah, that's a very good question. And um, yeah, in terms of the um, disclosure, this is why the American government, actually, Congress, have already done disclosure, but they, they did it so that you can't say you were never told because extraterrestrials and UFOs and um, UAPs, um, as they call them now, are being cited more and more by different people. So um, people can travel to these different realms when they go to sleep they call it dreaming but that's when your physical body is at rest and then your spiritual being can travel so it's going to get to a point where it's becoming so popular that it's going to be hard to keep the lid on it so disclosure will definitely we will see it in in our lifetime so yes good question um Okay, how do historical records from ancient Egypt describe their relationships with Nubia and do these descriptions align with the notion of unified Nubian Egyptian culture? See, again, when, when we start dealing with the subject of Egypt, um, what, a lot of what people know of Egypt has been commercialised. So you have to go pre-dynastic, you have to go back to what we are talking about when we say these Patarites or the Neolithic, the um, you're going back to like Napata and Moreau, that, that this this is way way before what people are calling Egypt and Nubia. Um, today, when you go, what you call in Nubia is the mixture that has been created from people that that came into Egypt. You know, like the Hyksos dynasty, and so. You know, when you go to Egypt, you've got like Aswan, you've got um, Luxor, you know, you've got um, different places. But Aswan, for example, where the natives, the, the descendants of the original people are there, but they've been pushed away. So the ones you see today are kind of like, the, more like the Arabs that, um, you know, like I mentioned, that basically invaded and went into Egypt. So e Egypt is, you know, that's why we go back to what we say is Wusabat which predates what people are calling like the Egyptian dynasties, etc. So we're talking about way, way before. All right, whilst we wait for another call, let's see if um, I can answer some more questions. Get your questions in. Um, connect with us. Connect with us. Oh, right. That's a good question, Quincy. Uh, why can't people who are possessed or disagreeable spiritual beings can't look me in the eye or show nervousness and guilt or shame when being confronted with truth? When I use... <laughs> what, again, you keep... I don't know, you're trying to push this Jesus, Jesus name. The reason for that is nothing to do with Jesus. It's to do with you and to do with maybe your vibration meaning that the eyes are the windows to the soul. 
And when you're dealing with truth, you're looking into someone's eyes, you're looking into their soul. And if people are, you know, they, and a lot of people have actually been trained and taught not to look people in the eye. So they look down, they look around. So not everyone that is behaving in that manner means that they, they are disagreeable, you know. But um, I, I, I don't know why you're trying to push this Jesus thing, because it's not Jesus. There's no such person. Next caller, please. Hello, my name is Kai. I'm from Chicago. Um, I'm calling the X. Is the story of Yakub true? Yes, it is. But the, that same story, like a lot of other stories, have been mixed up, um, remixed, and misinterpreted. And again, you can get all the information regarding that story in um, a scroll by Dr. Malachi Z. You'll call Shambara and Agatha, um, the cities within. And that story was about, because in the caverns you had different extraterrestrial beings that have come, have been in this, on this planet and were living there. Um, one of them was known as the Donakil and the other one was known as the Teros, all right? Now, because of the fact that they have different chromosomes, when they produced offspring, they created this being um, called Yakub because he, he suffered from um, hydrocyph... There's a, there's a word for it when you have two brains. I can't remember the term. And he had a big head because he had two brains. And he was ridiculed and teased by the two sides because he looked different. And so he vouched that he was going to get them back. And he said that he was going to create um, a weak and wicked being to show them that he was God. And so he went about creating the, the first variation of um, what you would call the Adamites, but they were known as the Flugerods, right? And um, that story, when other people tried to explain it, like, you know, the nation um, of Islam, when they explained it, they explained it as well, but there were remixes and they were saying it in a way that you know that the uncle found a magnet and rubbed it together and it, but it was the same story and the same and it's the same story that ended up in the bible with the jacob and esau story but it's just a, a remix of the same story but it, it was a true story based on this um this entity and he went around um he went around the coast of africa because he was doing this on his journey, so he took the black jeans and then it, like the, the story goes that to end up with um, this being that's considered to be weak and wicked, he had to extract, you know, the brown from the from the black to get to the to the to the to the yellow to the red and then to the colorless man. Um, but that was before the Adamite story, you see. But then eventually. Some of the Fulgurod mixed with the, the Canaanites or the Canaanites who they came by way of the curse of leprosy, you see, and that ties in with this story of the Pleiadians um, and, you know, them asking the Draconians to stop eating them so that they can create a source um, of food for them known today as the Adamites. That's, what, that's where you get the red, ruddy red being that in the Bible, they're picking up as Adam, because the word Adam comes from the Hebrew word Adama, which means of the ground, and ruddy red. And, you know, it explains there are different Adams in the, in the so-called Bible. But, um, yeah, so that story is true. Again, I've just given you, you know, a short, the short version. Yeah, uh, yeah, this, the question about... The Philosopher's Stone, apparently Tahuti speaks about, and it's in the book of Aquarius, how to make it. Um, again, Tahuti is the most intelligent and prolific writer with the emerald tablets and so on. And yeah, um, when you say Philosopher's Stone, again, that's when the Greeks um, got hold of it. But yes, Tahuti is that being that um, 
It's the reincarnation today of Pa and the Bab Yanun, Dr. Malachi Zuyo. Um, caller, go ahead. Um, this is Kai again. I'm um, calling to ask one more question about Wallace Ford Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Because of like his um, racial, like the color of his skin, it yeah. made me question like the start of the Nation of Islam and if that is the right person we should be looking f like looking at like was he a part of the cia because like i feel as though like he got some information mm. and tried to help the black community as, po as much as possible that's one of the questions i mean that's one of the thoughts i had that he probably did but it kind of gave like he's he is a cia informant or at least yeah, yeah, again, this is something that has been addressed in, in many, many books by Dr. Malachi Ziyo. But at the end of the day, right, we're here to be united and not divisive. And we want, obviously, the, the information that the master teacher is teaching is so far ahead now, today, that we don't want to keep getting pulled back into these, you know, the religious books or... Because really, ultimately, like you say... Um, with the, when you deal with the nation of Islam, they, they teach in religion and that Islam by way of the Arabs. And um, like you say, when you look at the picture of, you know, um, W.D. Fahd Muhammad, he was, um, yeah, he was mixed. He was a half Caucasian. And it, it's kind of backwards that if you're a Nagaru or Negro that is fully 100% Nagaru, and then you have a mixture that you would then follow someone that is, you know, especially if you're teaching that the white man is the devil, and which was the, you know, that those teachings were taught initially. But as of today, it's really about those true seekers of truth to come over. Um, let's, let's be one. And um, we had a, a picture out, the master teacher put out a picture a long time ago called We're Family which you can still find where it's about all the leaders coming together. But yes, you're right. There was the infiltration. There was a conspiracy. And ultimately, it was teaching religion, which we're, we're not about. We're moving away from that. We, we actually, we teach religion to help people to see the truth and then um, make their own mind up. However, um, you know, people have to make their own choice. But... The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the, the original founder, um, before he left, he actually guided and told people who to look out for and who to follow and to, you know, move over. So people do know this information and it's down to them if they want to make the choice. Um, I want to ask if you guys are shipping books to the Netherlands so that I can order some. Yes, we are. We ship worldwide. Um, so yes, you can. Oh, lovely to see the Gloucester, Gloucester masses online, especially after our live radio show on Saturday with Wu Sabat. Yes, um, wanna, I want to give you guys a big shout um, of love. Um, we, yeah, we went, we went over there um, and did a, a show. We met some of the most you know, loving, beautiful people. Um, and we'll be coming back again. And yeah, Gloucester is in the house and like Wusa back to the world, we want to reach every corner because this transcends people, places and things. We want to move to vibrating and raising all of us to a level where we're starting to do things as supreme beings. You know, you know, it's happening. Um, people are waking up. And when things are happening to different people around the world, it's real. It's not me making it up. There are people who are having these experiences or have had these experiences all their life in terms of being having like the abilities to do things, but they felt out of place or were ridiculed or made to feel like they were crazy when they've, they've actually had an experience where they've met or seen extraterrestrials or been on crafts or, you know, traveled in their sleep, astral projection, and all of these things that we're supposed to be able to do um, naturally, you know, so big up. Gloucester family, um, yeah, good to see you all here. Okay, let me see, I haven't missed, 
I'm going to go right back and look through to see if I've missed anything because um, so many of you joining. Remember, your journey is your journey. And um, don't let anyone try to influence you, control you, you know, do, do it yourself. Study, read, make up your own mind. See if it works. And, and, and another note, because there are people that come on the platform and they think by just pushing the, what they're saying, um, it's fine. That, you know, people see through all of that. And um, if you don't want to be here, you, you don't have to be here. And um, there are going to be people who will not, you know, move to to um to Usabat immediately some people take some time to um confirm things for themselves you know but if you know you know if you don't you don't what is the um this is saggy empress what is the origin of speaking in tongues um yeah again we we we've got um books called um speaking in tongues and we've got another one speaking of tongues and um the origin goes back to, excuse me, being possessed by disembodied beings, um, and you find this in the in the in the book of Acts. But the the thing is, you have to understand what it was really about. The speaking in tongues thing was being able to speak other languages and share the the good news or the scriptures, as they call it, the gospel, right? But today, what people are calling speaking in tongues is actually speaking gibberish, which is when disagreeable entities, the, the dead, which people refer to as ghosts, are trying to utilise the living to experience life again. And when, you know, you go to like these churches, like the Pentecostal churches and certain churches that they beckon and call on these names, like this person keeps saying in here, um, these tones, these vibrations, these frequencies, they beckon these beings and they come and try to fuse with the physical person. This is why they start acting in an uncomfortable state and they're uneasy and then they start to foam, shake, and they start to utter this, what we call gibberish, and they say speaking in tongues. But the word tongue is lasan in the language, which means speaking with another language. So you can automatically speak different languages, you see. And this is why we tell you this word, the good news, Wu Sabat, has to spread worldwide and be available to different people in different languages. And the master teacher is a linguist, and that's what he studied, and he speaks many languages. So the speaking in tongue, in terms of how the, you know, the church is uh, interpreting it, is, is incorrect. We actually have, as I said, the book called Speaking in Tongues, Speaking of Tongues, um, which you can get to get more information about that. Okay, let me see what else we have. Okay, um, Mo made this, it says, is there anyone else we might know of that has been possessed by Tahuti, the same being that has possessed the martyr teacher, the spirit is still present? Listen, you're making, this, this is, this is all this slick um, people, I don't know if you're being slick, but the master teacher is not possessed. That's not a possession. He is a being that is able to control and not anyone can possess him. It's like a possession is, is different from being an avatar or a channel or somebody that is channeling um, information from beings that are allowed or he's allowing them. So this, this, he's not possessed. So when people try that, the being Tahuti has incarnated over many generations or many um, cultures that's why he's known as Hermes he's known is known by many many names the Houthi but yeah the master teacher is, is not possessed he's a he's an avatar a channel that is used and only specific beings can can communicate through him just like other mediums who are used but 
a possession is when you are not in control of the entity that is taking control of your of your body. All right. So um, hope that's answered that question. Oh, why do you side squares around even the photo from behind? I don't understand. Why do you side? Why do four sides squares around even the photo from behind? That's a very vague question um, because I think I think I kind of get where you're coming from. Um, this is from Esworth Charles. I think that's trying to talk about the. Um, I think it might be related to the the squares in terms of it. Ha you know, you can have pictures in a circle, but it's not quite the same. Um, I don't understand. The question is not very clear. Let me move on. Could you explain why the master teacher needed? to transition between the different schools of thought, Islam, Christianity, and how we can discern the truth in the scriptures from the falsehood. Yeah, that, that was just like, in order to train you and to teach us, um, because before you're able to open your mind up and accept information that is new to you, a lot of times people hold on to what they know. Just like we're finding now where you're trying to teach people about you know, these religions and they're holding on to them. So he knew that he had to raise us up in degrees, just like when you go to school. You're, you're not going to be taught um, university level information when you're in the kindergarten or nursery. So you learn in stages. And not only that, your, your mind and your brain specifically has to be able to, it's like a muscle. You can't start lifting high volume weights if you can't lift the smallest ones yet. So you have to train your muscles to lift more and more as you get stronger. It's the same with the mind. So the schools were just walking us back, as I said, because when you're in the school of religion, you believe everything they're telling you in this book that they're telling you is from God and you believe, you know, that there's a character somewhere in heaven. And so when you kind of you have to, some people, if you just tell them straight out, like, you know, these gods are extraterrestrials or whatever, whatever, they might not be able to handle it. So you have to walk them through. So we wanted, when he was trying to teach us actual facts, Parterak, Master Secret, known as the Hereafter Doctrine or Wunawap, Musabat, we were still asking questions based on the, you know, the books of the Bible. So um, that's why he took us through the different schools. So now, we going out to help save people that are in that worldwide, we have to be able to converse with them in whatever school they're in. And you find that. That's why when you speak to people that are in, uh, say, Islam, you know, you have to speak to them based on what they know. You speak to people that are in Christianity, you have to, you have to meet them where they're at, and then you raise them up in degrees and vibration. And how can you discern the truth? Truth is truth. The truth, you feel it, you know it, you can check it out, compare it with other things, and then you will know for sure. The truth has to have no doubt. So you have to keep questioning and probing until it makes sense and is clear to you. All right. Um, Um, the mods are helping. They're putting scrolls and books and um, references for you guys to go and research. Um. When someone is near transition, how can Wolstabat play a part? Um, it depends on who the person is when you say someone, because that's the whole point. Wusabat is supposed to, you're supposed to, um, I mean, obviously, if you didn't know about Wusabat, that's different. But Wusabat is here to prepare you. And so you know, because if you don't know what's going to happen to you when you're nearing, when you're transitioning, then you might just be afraid, you might be scared, you might be you know, coming up, meeting these different entities, 
um, you know, you might you might not um, know that some of them are disagreeable, but if if it's somebody that has known about Wusabat and they're studying and putting into practice, we have scrolls like the twenty four elders, like um, the spiritual you after the physical you dies, and many many other scrolls that when you read them, it starts to take away that fear. You start to know that you're you're just moving to a different level of existence, and you know what to expect and you know, um, you're not going to be tricked when you, when you're in that um, in that situation. And in terms of what can be done, it depends on the person and what it is their chance, their um, supplications and things that we do um, that can can help. But it's not about leaving it to the very last moment and then you start to worry or panic in terms of where am I going? What's going to happen to me and stuff like that? Because you've been promised this going to heaven or going to hell um, story from, you know, from um, the religious world. What do you, about David James, what do you mean when you say don't be on the ET's menu? Um, meaning that there are extraterrestrials that eat human flesh and eat humans, just like humans that eat cows and chickens and pigs, you know, some of these extraterrestrials, they eat flesh. So when we say men new, M-E-N, the men, as in man, you, um, meaning that you don't want to be, there are many, many movies that talk about this. Yeah, so that's what we're saying, avoid seasoning yourself and preparing yourself to be taken by extraterrestrials that abduct people. Um, many people go missing and um, there are extraterrestrials that eat human flesh. Uh, there are people on the planet that eat human flesh and um, it's disguised in many ways. I know some of this stuff might sound scary to some people but do your research. Um, so God Blackman, is colonization good or bad for black people? If it's bad, then how do we escape it? Yeah, um, of course it's bad. Um, people telling you to be other than who you are and to do things to you that it's not humane. Um, and how do you escape it? You. And again, I don't even know who's black people or we're referred to, but I know what you're saying. Um, in that general sense of the word, we, we get together, we build and we um, raise ourselves so that we're not acting and behaving in a manner which, can, you know, you can be colonised. What is your task about Gnostic teachings? Yeah, they, they, those are some of the things that they try to hide from people. Those teachings, this is where we talk about true spirituality or some of the information that, you know, these spiritual schools had, like um, the Essenes, and they hide some of these, these teachings. But ultimately, um, it's about, it's about who's about now. Um, what else? Oh, da, 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 da. Um, and yeah, when people people generalize a lot, it's, it's when you say we, 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 not everybody is in the same level or position. Um, people that don't raise themselves or are still in religion, for example, they, they think everybody's on the same level, which is not true. So this person, they don't want to talk, but they say we read it out. Okay. Um, I have a question. What evidence do you have for your teaching, such as the stories about planet risk and the narrative of the history of the Earth? Thanks, Alex. All right, so again, it's, it's not what we have, it's what has been found and proven. So if you don't know something and you've never been aware of something, it doesn't exist to you, right? But the minute you are told that information, you start to research, you start to look and you will find for yourself. 
the evidence that backs it up, right? So I'm saying that to say, it's just like, have you noticed that when you buy a car, a particular model, that you start seeing that car everywhere? But before that, you didn't see it, right? So when we're dealing with Planet Risk, remember, that information was first given to us by someone who's saying, I come from this place. And people were like, where is it? Give us a description. And he explained lots of detail. You can find this in the Holy Tablets. You can find this in a little scroll called um, uh, Ilion and, and Risk, where he was describing it having a, sol a tri-solar system. He gave us so much detail prior to anyone ever doing so, right? And people were like skeptical. How do we know? It's just like, if I told you I come from somewhere that you've never been before, all you can do is rely on me to explain and tell you what that place is like, right? So if you've never been to Africa before, never been to a particular village, you, it doesn't exist to you, right? But with time, things like tri-solar systems were not found, but eventually they got found. So now, if somebody told you about that before it was found, how can you now dispute it when you can see the evidence? Yeah, that's just one example. Now, as opposed to the scriptures and all of that, when we say the Bible, the Quran, and these books are plagiarized and they're, they're young in terms of how long they've been around on the planet. So you have to go and do the research. And we say, this book here is older than this one, right? The Sumerian tablets, the, you know, Gilgamesh ep uh, epics, the Enuma Elish, the so many tablets that get found and then you read them and they have stories that are identical to the stories you're reading in the much younger books. And you're like, well, if this story came first, you know, that one was, it predates the one that you're using today. So you have to research the scientists, the archaeologists, the anthropologists, you know, people that they look for things and they research and they study and then they come with evidence. That's how you know. And you compare and then you make up your own mind. And that's, that's, um, that's how you know. Um, King, yep. I've lost my, I've lost my chat. So if you can just help me find that, please. How you all doing out there? Hope you're enjoying the live sessions. Tabu Tak, thank you. Um, goals 2023. I can have a debate and give straight proof that Atlantis was in Africa and that beings come from the stars. That's true. But again, we don't debate. You know, the debate thing is like, it's either true or it isn't. It's either fact or it isn't. Um, and it's, it's, we're not trying to fight each other. We're trying to teach and give out information for people to research and for people to be able to discern and, you know, wake up from the spell. Um, how do you feel about Billy Carson's work? Do you think it aligns with the work of Wu Sabat? Okay, so the thing about different people, um, first of all, we're not here to put down anybody and um, we're about unity and unification. But I will tell you this for a fact, there's nobody, no matter who you are on the planet right now, that will surpass the information of Wu Sabat or of the master teacher. So it's best we just come together and work together. Um, people do give information like Bill Carson, like, you know, our brother, brilliant brother, Dr. Uma, it's not um, Uma Johnson anymore, it's uh, Ife Tunde, right? I can name many, many people out there, but they don't, they give information, which is great, but are they able to take you further than that, you know, in terms of the language, teach you a language, the culture, the, um, you know, the deeper levels of information, they're not, I've not seen that. Um, 
do they have a culture the way they, you know, what, what is what is their, where's the foundation, where's the source of the information and where is it leading or taking us? Is it just information, information, and then leave you to your own devices? Or is it of building a community, building a culture and living by that culture? So yeah, we, we just say, all these brothers, they really should come close and come and work with us if they're really about um, doing the work of, yeah, humanity, you know, uplifting humanity. So, yeah, um, I ain't got nothing against Billy Carson, um, but Wu Sabat is on a totally different, different level. Yeah. It's our job as student teachers. Okay, sorry. That's uh, one of our student teachers. What's the master's teacher's plan to liberate Africa from religion since it's the most affected where we can't afford the books or access? Yeah, um, it's not just about what the master teacher has done. He's, he's done a lot of work by putting out the, the knowledge, the information, building communities, giving us our language, giving us back everything that was taken from us to know who we are. Now we have to do our part. And if you're in a location, in a place, um, you're supposed to know this. The knowledge, we, this is, we give out and teach this knowledge for free. You know? But of course, to print books, you need... You know, you need machines, you need paper, you need ink, you need, a, you know, editors, you need people to put it together. And um, so there are expenses, so we need to be able to generate economically to be able to produce. But, you know, you spreading information, teaching classes and other people wherever you are um, will help spread Wusabat and will liberate people by breaking the spell. However, you have to break the spell for yourself um, first before, you know, and it starts with the mental, because once you're united mentally, you're automatically united physically. So it's about, like I was mentioning before, getting the, um, the, the right knowledge, the right wisdom, the right understanding, which leads you to sound right reasoning so that you can reason properly then you get together and you work together in communities to, um, to build. I always felt like religion was questionable as in the power was me, but when I did have spiritual encounters, yeah, because you didn't know any better, so you're gonna call on what you know, but it is really you, it's your ancestors. A lot of people will say that, you know, this entity did it for me, but they don't recognize or realize their ancestors are alive and working and helping them from the other realms or the other planes of vibration. Okay, uh, let me see. What other questions do we have that I haven't? Okay. Uh, Do you have schools that teach telekinesis, telepathy, clairvoyance, and development of the higher sense? Simple answer is yes. Um, and there, there isn't a quick fix. Uh, you know, people sometimes just want to be given, as they say, the pearls but they haven't done or don't want to do any work on you have to work on yourself and and um the 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 work is inward it's a lot of you and if you've done the work already then um there are different orders within our culture that actually teach you and take you further not everything is publicly available that's, that's why you had the mystery schools in ancient times where people were initiated and um, taught, you know, the higher mysteries, you know, so come close. Uh, 
Uh, oh, uh, can you clarify the issue of this month, February, or why it ends on 28 days and after 24 years it goes? Yeah, because of the... Um, because of the, the time that we're using at the moment, it's not real time, it's, it's fictitious. And remember when I mentioned that when the planet was changed in terms of its size and its orbit, um, they had to then give you time based on the circumference of the planet, which they say is 24,000 miles, but it's actually 24,896. So they had to devise, because of the, um, the rotation, around the sun and just to kind of give you this fictitious time, they basically made the clock based on the 24,000 mile circumference um, and then divided it up into two parts. So 12 hours, what they call day, and 12 hours of what they call night. But most people just say there's 24 hours in the day. The day part is only 12 hours, you know, so it was just to, realign everything so the Gregorian calendar then there are many calendars not everybody uses the same calendar so when you're saying February this is tying into the Greeks and the Romans and that as I said the Gregorian calendar so yeah it, it, they give you like um, you know the time changes where you add out like you've added an hour take out an hour or the leap years and things like that so it, that's why you have to know what is natural time and what time we should be on. So we have a different calendar. Um, so this isn't a call, but it's a telegram. Okay. So just the bottom bit. All right, cool. Um, is this a question? Because it just says, it is paramount that we have our bodies cremated when we die for the sake of not having to remain connected to this earth longer than we have to. That's correct. Um, it, if this is the case, why is it that the ancient Egyptians believed in an in enlightenment? I thought I was going to say embalming. Okay, embalming. Yeah, yeah. Um, excellent question. Now um, the cremation is better because, like you say, you're going to leave here. You're not leaving your body parts for people that are into cannibalism, for people that are into art, um, organ har harvesting. Um, and many, many things that they do now. So in ancient times, there was proper like rituals and ceremonies where we would channel the energy, you know, to go back where it's supposed to go. This is known as opening of the mouth ceremony where the energy was directed and channeled towards like where they, they were from, like Risk, um, sorry, Orion, Sirius, etc. cetera. Um, the embalming part was because because they knew that in the future, right, we, the offspring, would need to know who was here first. So they left a lot of information. So like when these archaeologists, etc., are digging up the, the graves and doing carbon dating, taking DNA tests, it now proves without a shadow of a doubt who was here first. Um, and now there aren't any arguments as to which race came first. So some things were done on purpose to preserve the DNA because today the, um, the DNA and frequencies and energy is all about um, exposing and giving out facts so people can't dispute it. So it was partly done on purpose, and, but in that time, you didn't have fear of all the things I'm talking about. There were proper rituals and ceremonies to, to guard the body and preserve the body in a way that no one would have access to it. But later on, as you can see, they started to desecrate and dig up, you know, um, our ancestors and dig up the pyramids and because they're trying to find out information where, where they're from and so on. So it was partly done intentionally. Is it done? Okay. Okay. Um, is it true that 
Is it true there was African people who believed in the crow but worshipped the sun? Um, in, in ancient, when we say Africa, Africa is a, you know, it's a big place and it has many different tribes and many different um, people. But the, when you look, for example, to give you a good um, analogy, when you look at ancient Egypt and you see like the heads of like Hurrah, he's got a, uh, the bird head, and then you've got Tahuti, who's also got a beak. There are many, many um, pictures that show them with animal heads. That is not what they look like. Those are like masks, you know, like if you ever went to um, a carnival or something, you would see people wearing masks. Those masks were depiction of the animal nature that they related to or something that they did. So the, the, um, the, the bird... Um, which has the beak um, in terms of Tahuti, that's because the quill or the pen that he used to write, that beak on the bird kind of related to that. Um, so yes, in terms of when you see animals, doesn't mean that that's the people or that they worship those animals um, because the sun wasn't worshipped either. That's a misnomer. With being animist or with being people from the sun or people that know about nature, we recognise the power of the sun and we gave reverence to the sun by acknowledging that its presence meant that life will ex continue to exist on the planet. And the crops, the farmers, everyone to a certain degree worships the sun, if you want to use that word, because without the sun there won't be any life on this planet. Um, well, m most of the life that's on the planet that relies on the sun will die. So it's not worshipping the sun, it's just acknowledging, as, as I said, as animists, as people that deal with natural nature. So that's that question. Um, okay, I've covered those. Um, Um, is the name Patar Kathor Aha in hieroglyphics or anywhere on the walls? Um, on the walls, what, in Egypt? Um, I'm, I'm not sure, but we can definitely look into that. The good thing about being live um, on OSM Vision and doing these lives is that we can always answer questions that we leave out this week or that we don't have an answer for because... You know, we are stu we're students, we study and we can go and research and find out. But um, I'm, I'm not sure, I haven't seen um, that information, but we'll definitely look into it and then maybe address it next week. Um, who or what are blue orbs? My brother had an experience with one. It followed him while walking home, then appeared in front of him, he had no bad feelings from it, then it vanished. Um, again, with some of these experiences, they're personal. I don't know your brother, I don't even know in terms of um, what race he's from, because we are taught about orbs, and there are many orbs um, that are around. And, and they're, you know, they're known as Corrigines and they're different orbs that um, when, when the female Adamites or uh, Caucasian are in their six months, some of these, these orbs, um, they basically re-enter the, 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 the child being born and then come back out. But, I mean, it's very vague. They, 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 some of this is covered in some of our scrolls. But, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you what his experience was, what the orb was. And, um, you know, I would only be just giving you bits and pieces. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what the orb was. But, you know, we do have information in our um, scrolls about orbs and what they are and how they come. If one of my mods can um, give you the links to any of the scrolls, that would help. Wow, um, so many questions. Let's see, what else is here? Um,
Okay, I just turned 20 years October the 8th and I know a lot. And I know a lot studying OSM Vision. Terence Howard, Billy Carson and so much more. Okay, that's great. Um, no question there. Um, okay, let's see what else we have here. Listen, this Wu Sabbat is something that we, we can literally study and study and study because there's so much to our story. Um, okay, question. Is there a black sun and what is the process of harnessing the energy if possible? Yeah, the sun is black. Um, even though you're given that picture of it being yellow, um, the, the people that were studying, trying to find that information, like um, the occult and people like... Um, Hitler, they spoke about the black sun. In fact, you can actually research this, but the sun itself is not, it's, like I said, it's energy. And the blackness that surrounds stars, because suns are stars, and I've explained that these stars have energy that's burning, hydrogen and helium. But when you go beyond the suns, you end up in darkness. So there's a period of time known as the Black Sun. And um, when you look on the cover of our books, um, the actual facts on the back of them, you see a picture of that, what they refer to as the Black Sun. And when you look at the motion of what people call the motion of the sun, even though it's the planet moving around the sun and not the other way around, the motions of the suns were mapped. So from the horizon, Horus rising, or the, what people call the horizon, you have a position where they will say the sun is rising. Horus rising, horizon, rising. And then it goes from that point, which is known as Atum in ancient Egypt. And then it moves to the middle where people will say it's at the center or the zenith, yeah? That's known as Atun. And then when they say the sun is going down, it goes to this position on the other side of the line of the horizon, known as Amun. But there's a period where the sun, they say it's gone down. And this section here where it's going down is hidden before it comes back to rise. This part here is called, or the, the depiction is the black sun, because you don't see it. Now that's just symbolic in terms of a day, you know, it rises, it goes to the middle, then it goes down and it comes, goes to the underworld and then it comes back up. But when you start to look at that with time, as in not just one day, but when you're dealing with thousands of thousands of years, you're talking about the, the, the different sections, or if you did that, you'd have four sections and each section is 6,000 years each, right? And this is referred to as the, the sun and moon cycles of 6,000 years each. Two moon cycles, two sun cycles. And one full rotation would be 24,000 years. And then a new cycle starts again. And that's where we are now when we came to the year 2000, where a new world or a new cycle of what they call the equinox, 24,000 years. But well, remember when I was talking about the time and I was saying that 24,000 years is, is rounding it up or rounding it down because it's actually more than that, yeah? So one cycle is it's an equinox, 24,000 years. Another cycle, they would say it's an epoch because they round it up from 48,000, which would be the 224, um, and then they will say an epoch, which is like, 49, they round it up to 49,000 years. So and that's another cycle of, let's say, 50,000 years, and then it, it carries on. But there are times when this new cycle 
it's going to bring about an end of the previous cycle and um, destruction and certain things take place because of the adjustment. So that relates to that question about the black sun as well. Um, harnessing the energy is really recognizing that you have a sun within yourself and that sun ties into what people call your solar plexus and what people call the chakras, which are energy centers and vortexes of vibration that you can enhance and utilize to do many things by bringing them together because you have to center yourself with that energy. Um, so yeah, you have a black sun which is within you as well. See, again, like um, as a result, when we look at the sun from the surface of the earth, particularly when it's high in the sky. Oh, okay, someone's answered that already. Um, yep, that's correct. Oh, yeah, we've got websites. Our links are down in the chat. Yeah, I want to take time out to thank everyone that is um, sending questions. You know, you can still call in. Um, keep asking your questions, keep learning. Sometimes you may only get a part of the answer. And the next time you might ask the same question, you get a bit more. Um, and depending on how you ask the question, um, you're going to get, you know, different answers. So... And you can speak to different people, ask them the same question, and you will get even more information. So it's all also about it's always about continuing your study and learning. Ultimately, our goal right now is to do everything we can to help Panda Babyanun, um, Dr. Malachi Zio, spread the information, help with any efforts to um, you know get him exonerated greetings caller hey what's going on uh much respect my name is yaziel i'm from the united states and i had a question uh i've been like kind of studying like uh all of the books well i ain't gonna say all of them but quite a few of them uh the holy tablets the man from planet risk mm -hmm. uh, and a few other ones and in the holy tablets it states that there's a vortex that opens every 10 years mm -hmm. and it gives you and it lists the dates 2013 and, and it listed in that order. Mm -hmm. So my question is, and it gives you, and it talks about this. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, I'm saying, mm -hmm, go ahead. Oh, okay. And it talks about the seven thunders mm -hmm. uh, at the very beginning of the Holy tablet. So my question is, how does that operate between the seven thunders and because it talks about that's when the bureau and whatnot is supposed to pass through and the shams and whatnot it sits outside of the asteroid belt because the bureau is too big to pull to come into our uh i would say atmosphere, atmosphere. per se so it releases mm -hmm. shams so i would just want to know like the last recorded date in the holy tablets was 2013 the moves every 10 years and the vortex open 10, every 10 years and that would make it 2023 which would mean that the vortex is now open. So that was my question. Is that accurate to say? It is absolutely accurate. But there, there is, um, if you read the Holy Tablets, it goes beyond um, 2023. Um, and there is another one. And by um, 20, it goes to, because remember the cycle I just mentioned, the, the 6,000 year cycle, that goes on to twenty. 2030 um so you got to and you have 2043 as well in the in the holy tablet so there is one final um lift that is to come um so we we those who are elevating and would like to be ready because if you read the um there is a scroll called the nine um that I mentioned earlier on, that gives you more information. But the thing is that the Holy Tablets itself has expired, um, meaning that 
there's new information known as the hereafter doctrine, which covers, as you say, the new information like Patarak, like actual facts, master secrets, and then you have information that is only divulged to people that are within certain orders. So when I say the holy tablet has expired, it doesn't mean you can't read it or that the information is still not valuable. Um, are you a part of a community? If you are, then, or if you're part of any of the orders, um, if you're not, I'm saying you should try and, and you know, get close and so you can get updated information. But you were accurate in terms of the 10, the 10 year cycle. That, there are cycles within cycles. So you have a cycle that is running in 10 years, as in, um, you know, 2000, 2010, 2020, etc. Because the three years that came by way of the Philadelphia experiment, you know, and that's what threw time off. So then you added those three years where you started from 1943. And that's because when they did that experiment, they didn't have the power, the computer power to be able to calculate um, the, the zero time reference of those, the, the people, because you needed that information to lock time accurately. So it got through, thrown off and they had to um, wait three years to build a new, you know, the computer. So that's why you have that cycle that from 1943 to 1953 to 63, 73, et cetera, et cetera. But there are other cycles within those cycles um, that, you know, we would need to, um, yeah, um, so that we would need to know the information. And this is why Wu Sabat is here. And the more you study, and um, not just study, but being active and coming into the community, um, and working from within because, you know, there is information that is not publicly shared. Um, and that's why we encourage people to, to study, make, the, make your way into the communities and make your way into connecting with the master teacher. Because um, ultimately, we will be free once he is free. And uh, the world um, needs him. You know, so, yeah, you were correct in terms of the, the vortex. Um, but, yeah, keep studying, reach out, get involved, and let's get Wu Sabat spread into the world. Okay, so, um, yeah, we still got some time left if you want to get those questions in. Um, the whole point of, okay, let me, let me go back to what's the best way, because we get this question all the time. How, what's the quickest way for me to catch up? There's so many books. I may not have access to these books. Um, how can I get up to speed quickly? This is why we put the course together. Um, and people like to read. And yes, the physical copy is also available. available. But you can start today. The online version is even more extensive. It's an e-book. It has quizzes. It has interaction. You can ask questions, you can watch videos, you can get such a much better experiences from the online course, which has exactly the same content as is in the book, but more. And I'm talking about fast track your spiritual unconscious journey. And in that, it guides you to the many scrolls by Parnabab Yanun and, you know, guides you in terms of which ones to, to start off with, where to get them, or the links to the... Um, you know, to the stores and to the books directly. So um, I would say if you want to fast track your spiritual and conscious journey, that's the first thing you should do. And then from that, you'll be given, like I said, all the references and all the books to the scrolls that are available so that it's managed and it's structured in a way that, you know, it can help you speed up because we talk about this all the time. When a master teacher came, he was like, I'm going to take you on a long journey on a short path. And that sounded like a riddle, but he explained it when asked. And he was like, the long journeys, all the information, all the books, there are more books, thousands of books that we have to read 
to train our brains to get ourselves freed from the spell, to reprogram ourselves, including the subconscious mind, as I mentioned before. All of that is by design. When you're dealing with a master teacher, he is the master at teaching and he knows best of how to take you from where you are to where you need to be. So he said, the short path is the amount of time you have to absorb all this information so you can be ready and prepared and be transformed into the supreme being you're supposed to be and regain all your, your powers that were maimed from you, you see. So there is a process to this and not everyone's going to take it as seriously as, as seriously as others, but you know, it's ultimately your choice. All right, let's see. We've got more questions coming in. Um, I appreciate the smallest things about life. I like going outside and watch the birds land in front of me, land in front of me, just relax as well as stray cats just chilling with my energy. You have to study. Absolutely, that's true. And being in nature is one of those ways that you need to connect with nature because a lot of us are in concrete buildings. We're looking down all the time. We are, you know, running around. You don't really take time to really connect with nature. And that's something that, you know, it's encouraged. So, yes, that's true. Um, <laughs> don't say things like that. You make me vibrate. Uh, cool. Uh, okay, what else do we have? Grand rising of our collective consciousness, nine ether children of the sun. Free Dr. Malachi York. 100%, 100% Marion Evans. This is what we've got to do. They can't, they can't, that, the being, that energy, they cannot contain that being. Um, a very good idea will be reading clubs or even reading as a group. These are the things we do in the communities. That's what we keep saying. We call them study groups. And um, when you become part of, you know, close with, you can get together in your communities or wherever you are and study together. Um, you'd be surprised how much you learn from each other. And that's what it is about. It is about us uniting. Is it possible for your siblings to be another kind of being? This is from CJ, from you, even if you have the same parents. Absolutely. Parents, as the word rent, you see, is to rent. You rent that vessel to come through. Although you have to be connected to that being via, via your bloodline in some way. However, remember, you can be, you can be possessed. You can have walk-ins. You can have many spirit beings, entities that you could be programmed differently. Your subconscious mind. So, the programming can make somebody behave and look completely different to their sibling. Um, remember, your family are people that you're familiar with, familiar spirits. So it's not necessarily... Um, and you have distant relatives as well that come through, and some are agreeable, some are disagreeable. So depending on you as the being, how you centre yourself, how you align yourself, and what you practice and put into action, um, you're going to be different to someone else. The vibrations that you resonate with, the, you know, the music you listen to, the, the foods you eat, the places you go, the people you hang around with, the exchange of bodily fluids that you've had, all of that has an effect on you. So that was from CJ. What is the um, what is the Wusabat view on the Moorish Science Temple? That's Landlord um, Horton. Um, we know about them. We study everyone and everything. And again, the Moorish Science Temple under Noble Jew Ali. Again, if you really go back and do the research, that was again really going back to to religion and to to the to the Arabian or Arabs. So he taught. Uh, you know, a lot about the Moors and things like that, but um, ultimately, you know, the, he's, he's one of the people that, um, you know, taught information, but that's where, when you look at, like, 
the evolution from the Moorish Science Temple to Leonardo Nation of Islam to um, yeah to, to what it is today that kind of has its roots from the Moorish Science Temple but um, because with no, you had Noble Juali, then you had Honorable Elijah Muhammad. They both were, you know, teaching this Arabian, what we call Islam today. So we have to let go of religion and move forward. Do you believe in the theory that Cain is still alive and roaming the planet? And did the master teacher ever touch on this subject? This is from Splash Zoe. Um... Honestly, yeah, when you say Cain and Abel and um, Cain, is Cain still alive? When you deal with genetics, they, these are people that had offspring. And yes, yeah, so the offsprings are still alive. This is why you still have a lot of disagreeable on the planet. And um, it's about the DNA and the genes and how the, those offsprings, like if, if you have children, they have children, they have children. So yeah, there's like even what people call the devil, they think is one person, but we know that it's dealing with offspring. That's why he said that, you know, the seed, the woman's seed um, will be against the serpent seed. And when you say seed, you're dealing with zira, or zar, which deals with like sperm. Um, yeah, again, we spoke about the semen from the seeds, semen. Um, so it's not a theory when you look at it from epigenetics and you deal with genetics and you deal with DNA. Yeah, you still have offspring and people on the planet, both on God's side, as we have to use that term, and um, on the devil side. Cain and Abel, or all the people you can ever think about that actually did walk the planet and existed, they had offspring and children. And you get the whole, the whole lineage in the Bible from Adam all the way, you know, to the to the book of Revelations. Um, okay, let me see. We've, we're, we're really coming, look at the time, 21, 21. Those numbers, 21 is 9, so that was 9, 9. And, um, yep, yeah, 21, 21. So we're coming to the end. Um, remember, tune in every week. I hope by next week some of you have um, you know, signed up for the, for the online course and have studied it. Um, of course, you can ask questions even once we lock off. You can still ask your questions on the um, Telegram group. You can send us three questions recorded of yourself. Um, just video three questions using your phone. Upload them to WeTransfer or um, Always Vision osmvision.wetransfer.com and um, you know we don't have to stop this is what we're trying to do we're giving you everything you need to keep studying to keep learning to keep evolving to connect with us um, you can read the books you can do the online course you can come on our courses um, on our free Saturday classes from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. every Saturday UK time and you can join via Zoom, Clubhouse, from wherever you are. So really, no one has an excuse anymore. The truth has arrived. The truth is here. You have no excuse no more because um, you can't say you didn't have the opportunity. So you, you have to study and um, learn, learn, learn. And then once you get to a point where, you know, you want to teach, teach and share that information, even from reading just one book. You can help save somebody's life. It's really about, you know, helping humanity through what is going on in, in the world today. Um, why is Dr. York having a green light connecting him to a ship in the picture behind you? Question two. Is since, since planet Risk, Risk has three suns, does it mean the planet only used... Uh, you to experience daytime and no night. That's an excellent question. Um, the green light refers to that. The green light is the most powerful healing force. Um, that's why if you see nature, 
nature is green, you know, health, healthy things are green. And so the green light is a, night, it's a healing force, it's a, a high vibration. And the craft is showing that he came here from somewhere else. And as you've mentioned, Planet Risk, um, Planet Risk has the three suns like in a pyramid and the orbit that Risk goes through, it's, um, it's kind of like, if I can draw it, like this. Yeah, so um, you're right, at certain points, the three suns will be pointing at a particular point, which will mean that it's very um, hot. I mean, there's a book called The Man From Planet Risk. There's a book called um, Risk and Illusion. Um, but yeah, you know, there's more information on Dr. York um, coming from Planet Risk. Does it mean the planet only used to experience daytime? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's a very good question. Good observation because the planet is um, constantly orbiting the three suns. So, um, yes, good question, good observation. Yeah, because obviously the night, the night and day thing here on our planet, um, we're coming to the last few minutes, the so night and day, the sun doesn't actually rise as we think, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't rise and then go down. It's an illusion in the sense that the sun is always in its position. It doesn't move like that. Um, what happens is you have the moon or the satellite that people refer to as the moon, which orbits the, the planet Earth. And then they, um, they orbit the sun together. So the, the, the shadow of the, of the moon blocks the sun on one side when it's rotating. This is what people are calling night. But it, it's not night, it's just that it's a shadow state. You know, like if the sun is shining and you place an object there, it puts a shadow. And so really the correct term is, is the shadow hours because the sun is always shining, it doesn't go down, it doesn't come up. And this is why you can travel from one part of the country across to the next part of the planet, sorry, and you will find that you can leave in the daytime and arrive at night or leave at what they call night and in the shadow hours, you know, because you actually literally can fly when you're on a plane from one, you see where the shadow is and you cross over from, from the dark to the light because it's just a shadow state. It's not really the sun going down or up, all right? So the sun is always shining. Um, right, let me see if I can get the last one or two questions in before we sign off. Do you think a time will come where the master teacher will be free to teach us again? This is all we're waiting for because a lot of the information he still has to give us, he's still holding. And um, yes, it, that time will definitely come. And if we all focus, concentrate, chant, put our energy into making that a reality and support and work together, the quicker that will happen, you know. So, yes, definitely, that time will definitely come. But it's also down to us. And actually, on that note, he's asked us for one thing, and that is love and unity, to love each other as we love him and to be able to put away our differences and come together as a people and then that love that collective focus will spread and change you know the planet and change humanity and um, get rid of these old ways that have been plaguing and keeping everyone back because we are we are making that dimensional shift okay let me see Last question, right? The book Leviathan 666, is it written the devil was born in 1966? Where was, where was he before that and where is he now? And was that Zuen or Heilau? 
so um, when you say the devil, it, it sounds like one person, but the devil has children and offspring, um, and, and you're referring to someone known as Nana. Zuen, um, so Heilao, he says, uh, so you had who people call Heilao or Iblis. Um, that's Zuen. There are many, many names for, for that. Zuen is just one of those terms, um, which kind of ties into Zion, which ties into the whole religion, religion, co religious concept. But um, where is he now? He comes and goes. Nana, he was here in... Um, 2003, two, I think. Um, yeah, he has offspring, he has children, he has agents. So the devil can be anyone or anything. It's about your actions and what you do. So it's not just one person, even though, you know, that being is the one that has the offspring and children. That was from Colin Mohapi. And in the 1966, that's the children, the seeds of the devil, like they were born all around the world. Um, you're talking about the 13 sons, etc. But we can go into that next week if you want, because we've run out of time. Because, um, yeah, we've come to the end and want to thank everyone. Subscribe to OSM Vision. Share the links. The, the least you can do is share the links and share the videos and, you know, like the videos because... The more you help, the more we can actually continue to do this and spread rules about. Join our Telegram groups, search your email for DS4S newsletter and um, make sure that email is not going to put those mails into spam. Yeah, um, come and visit. We, you know, if you're local, come. If you want to have any one-to-ones, you know, yeah, feel free to do so. Um, but yeah, we want to give thanks to everyone. <laughs> That's funny. All right, people, we want to say wadu. Wadu means bye in our language. Until next week, peace and unity.